Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial, and today we're recording in Demon Extreme, which is an ice hockey store in Chelmsford, and we're going to be going through the basics of if you're a beginner to ice hockey and you want to get your kit, so we're talking full ice hockey kit, we're going to be giving you the basics of what you need to keep in mind while you're buying your kit, and helping you out and giving you some points and tips along the way. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is the most important part of your ice hockey kit, which is going to be your skates. Now that we've done a lot of videos in the past on skates, the links will be in the video description below, and I'll also put two links up there for differences on stiffness and also making model and things like that, all above there. But a quick basic and guide is what you need to keep in mind with the skates, is that there's so many different models and all of these different models have different traits and they're normally good for different kinds of skaters. A quick idea is these graphs over here are a Marmite kind of skate. People either love them or absolutely hate them. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at skates. With your Bauer Supremes, like these ones over here, they're normally um, kind of targeted at skaters that have slightly wide feet than what's considered the average and your vapors which is like this skate over here are normally targeted at skaters that have sort of normal feet or it could be um, described as a narrow foot so what you need to keep in mind as well as the different styles of fits that the different manufacturers offer you is also the different levels that the skates are intended for these ones over here are Bauer Supreme 160s now there's a lot that goes into these um, skate levels as I said there'll be a link in the video description above and also a link in the annotation above and below what you need to keep in mind is that the different levels of skates are intended for different people of different abilities, but also people of different sizes and heights and builds. So if you're, say, a 20 stone player that's about 6 foot, going for a basic skate like, uh, for example, these 1.0s for Vapors would not do you any good. Even though you're a beginner skater, because of your build and your size, you need to go for a much, much stronger skate. For example, like these X3.0s, which would be an intermediate boot meaning the structure of the skate is much more strong, it offers you a lot more stiffness and it will be able to hold and support you on the ice properly. These are the different things you need to keep in mind while you're looking at skates, but as I said, annotation, there'll be more detail above and in the video link description below, there'll be more detail there. So in terms of how much you want to spend on a pair of skates, if you're a beginner, going to be playing hockey maybe once or twice a week, not too heavy, I'd recommend going for something like the Supreme and 160s, depending on your fit. So you know that you're going to be spending roughly around the 250 mark, 200 to 250 mark. If you're a fairly, fairly light player, very um, young, say a nine-year-old or anywhere underneath that, a junior, you'd be looking to spend sort of around the 100 to 150 mark. That'd be okay. If you're a slightly bigger player, an adult, but you're learning and you're a beginner, you're going to be needing to spend a little bit more money to get that extra support, slightly stiffer structure of escape, which is around the 250 to 300 mark. And anyone taller than that or heavier or with a bigger build, you're going to be looking to go much higher, sort of the 300 to 350 mark. So what we're going to take a look at now is um, going to be the sticks. Different choices, a lot of, uh, to confuse a player, so we're going to break it down for you and hopefully give you a bit more information about them. For me, I'd say this is probably the second most important bit of equipment when you're looking at overall ice hockey gear that you're going to have with you. What we're going to be taking a look at are the different lengths of the sticks, the different grips, the flex, the shape of the blade, and the different sticks that are out there, which one would be best for you if you're learning um, and you're a beginner. For, for beginners, I'd always recommend going for a wooden stick, first reason for that is because wooden sticks are nice and cheap when compared to the other varieties of sticks that you have out there. You're going to bang the stick up a lot while you're learning how to play the sport, so being that you're not spending too much money on it means that you don't have to worry about your pocket and you can just focus on the game, which is definitely something that you'd want to consider. Another reason for that is that wooden sticks also give you a great feel for where the puck is without having to look down, which is definitely something you want to keep in mind. In terms of the flex, if you're a beginner but you're an infant or a child, you want to go for a flex between 40 and 50. If you're a teenager to an intermediate level or even a beginner level, you want to go for a flex between 60 and 75. A regular flex for um, somebody that's sort of an intermediate and anywhere above that point would be 80 to 85. And if you want to go any higher than that, if you're a really big player, say, again, your weight and your size comes into play with sticks a lot. If you're, say, a 14 um, stone player that's about 6 or 7 foot, a 60 flex is not going to be strong enough for you. You'll break the sticks and you'll keep them um, spending a lot of money on them. So you want to go for something sort of between 85 to 100 flex if you're that sort of size and that sort of weight. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So one of the other points you need to keep in mind is definitely going to be the shape of the blade. You have two main um, shapes of blades. You either have square toes or rounded toes. The square toes are normally recommended for defensemen because it's really easy to kind of get the pucks that are stuck against the boards and also get passes that are from pucks that are sliding against the boards due to the square shape of the blade. But um, rounded blades, square blades, it's all personal preference. The more you play the sport, the more you learn and adapt to different styles of sticks, and the more you'll be able to pick out what works best for you. We're also going to take a look at the kind of grips that you get on different sticks. Now, with the beginner or basic level um, sticks, you don't really get a lot of choice in terms of grip. They normally have 
quite slippery surfaces, not, not offering an extreme amount of friction, so your hand can slide up, up and down them quite comfortably. But as you move up to the um, one-piece sticks, the carbon fibre sticks, you have a lot of different grips, some that literally stop your hands from moving, some people prefer that, but again, that's going to be personal preference. This is why it's so important to come into a hockey store to get your equipment rather than buying it online because when you come into a store you get to feel what the, the product feels like, you get to play around with it. Like in the store that I'm in right now, Demon Extreme, they have a synthetic room with a goal that you can go in there, shoot some pucks, play with the stick, see if that's what's right for yourself, which is definitely a plus over buying it online because you don't want to buy a stick online that costs you X amount of money, it gets home and you find out it's the wrong product. It's just why I'm always going to stress, come into your stores. But these videos just give you a bit more information so you know what to expect when you come in. But from there, we're also going to take a look at the shape or the curve of the um, stick's blade. You have a lot of different curves, but again with beginner sticks, you only get what they call a P19 curve or a Saki curve, which is kind of a great curve all rounder. You can do your sort of slap shots, being able to lift the puck up. It's a great point for your beginners to start off with until they learn and develop and see what they prefer. But again, if you want more information about these sticks, the different curves, the different angles, all of this kind of stuff over here, including the flex points, we have a video in the annotation up there that will give you a lot more detail on me. So what we're going to be taking a look at now are these body pads over here you can see. There's a lot of different makes once again, a lot of different models, different ranges. We're going to go over what you're getting for the extra amount of money, and if you're a beginner, what ones should you go for. So we've got two over here, two different makes. We've got CCM over here and we've got a Warrior pads over here. In terms of Evel, they're both intended for the same level, beginner to basic intermediates. And in terms of the different pads or what you're getting for that sort of money, these ones over here, the Warrior ones cost $34.99. The CCM 05s over here costs $43.99. The CCM is a much more recognisable brand and you are paying a little bit more for that. But also in terms of the pads, when you go up in price, what you're getting is a little bit extra comfort, maybe a little bit more range of motion, so it's a lot easier to move around in those pads. But um, And also a slight um, extra bit of padding. So you can see over here with this Warrior one, fairly soft around the um, rib cage over here in the, in the center point. And these ones over here give you this extra tab of support, which is a bit more stiff. So you are getting a tiny bit extra. So when you go up in pads from intermediate to advanced, what you're paying for is the name, of course, you're paying for a bigger range of motion, more comfort and mobility while you're moving around in the pads, and a little bit of extra padding. But unlike the skates, you're not paying for a lighter product. With these, the more padding, the more support you get, the heavier the product is going to get. As we said, beginners in this case, you're going to be looking to spend about £34.99 to £45, which would include both of these kits over here. So take a look at these ones over here. You can see these are intermediate ones over here. These ones are more advanced. In terms of the price, the CCM U plus uh, 8 kit over here, this is the 12, 8 behind it. This one's going for $74.99 and you can see what you get for that is much more padding over here. In terms of the pads, they're much more mobile, you have a lot more joints or um, bits of material that are attached together rather than all of it being in just one big block, which gives you a bigger range of motion, better mobility and comfort while you're in it. So this is the sort of things that you're paying for. When you go up in price point, you're paying for much more support, much more protection because you might be playing a, a type of hockey that involves checking or a lot more bit of physical contact. And you're also paying for a lot more mobility. So the higher you go in price, you're getting a lot more range of motion, more comfort and a lot more padding. But keep in mind, as I'm stressing, unlike the skates, you don't get a lighter product. With the pads, they might be roughly about the same weight or even slightly heavier due to the extra pads. So in terms of the shorts over here, again with price point, what do you need to look out for when you're buying a pair? There's a lot of different makes and models and as always, you're going to be paying for those makes and models. Uh, a quick example, you have these are my, over here, these are by Warrior, this is a Bentley Shorts over here. They cost $64.99, they're intended for beginners. Over here you have CCM uh, U plus 5s or 05s, they're again intended for beginners and they cost $74.99. So you can see there's a price um, increase just because of the name. They both offer the exact same amount of padding, the exact same amount of support, the same range of motion, but just because of the two different names, you're paying a lot more for that. The only other thing you need to keep in mind is what sort of fits these different brands have, which again is why it's so important to come into store before you select which one you want online. Come into store, get fitted, and then see which one works out best for you. But as you go up in the different brands, all you're really getting is increased support, increased protection, because as you normally go up in brands or in um, models, the level of hockey that you're playing gets much more severe. Normally you get a lot more contact in the sport as well, hence why you need more pads. But unlike the skates, as you pay more for a product, it doesn't get lighter with pads, it gets heavier because you have more padding, more protection. But what you do get is an increase in mobility. So the higher up you go, the more mobile the, more mobile the equipment will be, the more easy it will be to move around inside it. So the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is going to be your shin and knee pads and also your elbow pads. 
We'll start off with these ones over here. These are beginner to intermediate level um, elbow pads. And one thing that you're going to be getting as you move up in different levels is you're going to be getting more comfort, more support and protection, and more mobility. So we'll take a look at these ones over here. These are beginner to intermediate, so you're going to be looking to spend between 40 and 50 pounds to get your first set. Now what you're paying for when you go up in different models and different brands, as we said, mobility, support and protection. A quick example of that is with these CCM 07s, if I show you these very, very quickly. With these over here, you can see that in terms of mobility, you only have two points of this elbow pad that can move. This is all one piece and you only have that flex point right there and that's it. If I put these down, these are the 07s. And if I show you the 09s over here, which are, as I'm sure you can see, two models up, you can see that the mobility in this is much, much better. You have this piece, which can move individually to this piece, which again will move individually to this piece over here. You get three individual different pieces, increasing your mobility and your comfort, so you'll be a lot more flexible while you're using these. So with these over here, one thing I forgot to mention with the elbow pads is with these, the higher up you go in different models, not only the more support you get and the more mobility, but the weight of the product will increase slightly as well. Take a look at the knee and shin pads, the same thing stands. These are the 140s, these would be good for beginners if it's your first pair, or if you're an intermediate player, again, these would be more than ideal. The price point for these, you're going to be looking to spend 50 to 60 pounds. Anything above that, you'll be looking towards intermediate to top end stuff. And remember with the top end stuff, if you're not playing full contact hockey, then it's pointless having them. You're just spending money on it because of the name and because of the endorsements from the hockey players, which is why they're so expensive. But what you get when you go up in price point with these from the different models, you get more support, more protection, more shock absorption, but again, keep in mind that's going to increase the weight slightly, but you also get a more anatomical fitting piece of equipment, so it will contour and wrap to the shape of your body much more effectively, making it much more comfortable to use. So what we're going to take a look at now is helmets, the difference between them, and of course the price point. So again, the same thing stands with your helmets as well. The base point or the price that you want to start off with at the beginning if you're starting out is going to be £40 again to about £50 to £60. That will give you a good helmet, keeping in mind all of these have to go through the same tests in order to make them certified to use on the ice. So you, knew, you know you're going to be getting that level of basic protection guaranteed regardless of how much you spend. But just to give you a sort of price point, between sort of £49 to £50 is where you want to spend, um, is how much you want to spend on your first pair. But again, when you go up in the different models, we're going to show you just the bower range over here, but the same thing stands for all of the different range. What you get paying for is ventilation, comfort, also the secureness or the type of fit that you get, and also the name, as always. But in terms of comfort, we'll show you exactly what we mean. Like for example, this helmet over here, this is the 9900 bower, which is pretty much a top end helmet. And what you're getting with this one over here, as you can see inside, is an incredible amount of protection over there. Plenty of pads with extra pads in the middle of those pads, as crazy as that sounds, to increase the level of comfort and support you get. You also get these adjustable clips at the back if you can see that which move the base of the helmet in order for it to cup your head a lot more comfortably and to fit a lot more securely. With a baseline helmet you're not going to get this sort of level um, of detail or attention to detail and comfort. Moving up from there again as I said you get an incredible amount of pads on the inside to make it much more comfortable to use and you can see the styling of it in terms of how much ventilation it has is incredible. There's plenty of ventilation holes over there keeping you nice and dry and comfortable while you're on the ice. This is the sort of stuff that you can expect from a top end helmet. Now we'll compare that to a baseline helmet. If I put this down. This one over here is the Bauer 4500 which is sort of an intermediate to baseline helmet. If we turn that on the inside you can see the level of comfort you get on there is pretty basic. It's just one large piece of foam that's been cut into pretty much two or three separate pieces wrapping around the inside of that helmet. So you do get support and security but with this top end helmet on this side over here you get sort of um, shock absorption so when you get hit the impact is spread around the helmet to reduce the level of concussion or the amount of risk of you getting concussion but with this one you don't get that sort of protection. You can see that it's pretty basic. You don't get those clips that I showed you at the bottom there even if it's the exact same make because this is a more baseline to beginner level helmet. And again with the ventilation you can see you don't have all the ventilation charts going around the sides. It's pretty basic but you still do get that basic amount which is good enough for you when you're starting out. So another point to mention which is very important is that in terms of the helmet itself you're paying around £50 for your first sort of intermediate to basic or beginner level helmet you're only going to get the helmet for that £50. If you want to get a combo set, which includes the helmet and the cage to keep your face protected and well ventilated, you're looking at about £74.99. That's going to be the helmet and the cage. They're definitely worth having. You don't want to take a puck to the face. And the, keeping in mind the visor only covers half of your face. You might have seen that. Like on this helmet over here, you can see that it features a visor, but that only covers the eyes and sort of the tip of the nose. It doesn't protect your mouth, your chin, which is definitely important, you don't want to lose teeth. So $74.99 will give you the visor, protects everything, keeps you well ventilated. $74.99, good price point. So last but not least, we're also going to be taking a look at the gloves. 
Your first pair of gloves, you're going to be looking to spend around 50 to 60 pounds. That'll give you a good pair of gloves, very decent, allow you to get used to the, using the stick and the um, feel of the gloves while you're using the stick while you're on the ice. Uh, but what you want to keep in mind, when you're paying for sort of, you know, hundreds of pounds for different gloves, um, the things that you're paying for is going to be the brand and the styling. The name is going to be the biggest price point that you find. The bigger that you go in name, the more that you have to fork out for cash. Mobility, which is in, in terms of how comfortable, how flexible you can move your fingers while you're inside the gloves. And the next thing is going to be the support instruction or an overall comfort of the glove. So a quick example, these are Bauer Supreme 120s. These are a nice beginner level glove. They fit on my hand very, very nicely, giving me enough room for my fingers to breathe. They're fairly mobile, as you can see there. I can move my fingers quite easily, and they give me a good feel for the glove. While also, I'm sorry, a good feel for the stick while I'm using the gloves. And also they're quite well protected, as you can see right there. Taking a look at these ones over here. These are the Eastern RS, which are a top end skate, um, skate uh, hockey glove. These ones over here give me an incredible good, good feel while I'm in there, nice and comfortable. You can actually, the, the padding in, inside here feels incredible, very comfortable. Like, it, in terms of how much mobility I have, you can see that I can move my fingers very, very well. They feel like just normal gloves that you'd wear if your fingers were cold. In terms of the styling, you can see that it looks much, much better. Loads of nice sublimated designs which are built into the material so they won't fade or wear away as you use them. And you can see that they have an incredible amount of protection outside there, which is exactly what you'd expect from a top end glove. These are the sort of gloves that you'd find NHL players using. So what I just wanted to show you up close over here is if you look closely to these gloves, which is coming into the mobility factor, you can see that this uh, over here for one finger is completely one piece. There's no break in the middle there or a sort of a flex point for your finger to be able to move independently, which means these would be quite stiff. These are the Supreme 120s. As we said, this is a beginner glove. It'll be good for you to get the basics with, but as you can see, it is quite restricting. I'll show you a comparison with the top end glove. Again, over here I have the Eastern RS for you. You can see with these ones, that you have, your fingers are allowed to move completely independently. There's nice flex points all between there with extra padding. So your mobility inside these gloves would be much, much more improved when compared to the other ones that we just showed you. And as well as the, the um, design, as we said, all sublimated patterns over here look very nice and extra padding. This is, these are the differences that you can expect when you go from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So if you're wondering how much a beginner pair of gloves costs as compared to an advanced pair, the Bauer Supreme 120s retail for $59.99 and the RS, which are the top end glove, retail for $159.99. So you can see there's a massive price difference in terms of what you're getting, what you're paying for, and also there's quite a significant difference in terms of the features that you're getting. But if it's just for recreational hockey, you don't need to go above intermediate, so please keep that in mind and save yourselves a lot of money. So after shopping around Demon Extreme, the total that we've come out with, which is a baseline to give you an idea of the minimum that you're going to be spending to kit a player out roughly my size, I'm about 5'8 or 5'9, to kit a player out my size with basic equipment, you're looking at £670. This price is based on everything that you're going to need to get on the ice, including the helmet, including the grill that goes over the helmet, your girdle to keep your genital area safe, and also the uh, sweatsuit which goes underneath the pads, everything the player needs. This is based on getting all of the same equipment from the same manufacturer. So your pads, the helmet, everything from the same manufacturer, for example, CCM pads, knee pads, skates. By buying everything from the same manufacturer, that reduces the price. If you mix and match from different manufacturers to get a more custom look, or to just get things that you've seen on TV or your friends with, that will increase the price. So keep in mind, buy from the same manufacturer, save yourself some money. This is all baseline equipment just to get a player started. But one thing I will say is be sure that you get the right pair of skates. The price that I've given you is based on a pair of beginner to intermediate level skates, $249.99 for a pair of C Urban, the uh, Bauer Vapor X3.0s, which are a good intermediate skate. With CCMs, you could go for something like a CCM 06 to a 08. Those are a good intermediate level skates, which will last you for a while. It makes more sense to buy something that's going to last rather than buying something that's only going to get you by for a few months, and then you'll find yourself in a hockey store needing to replace them very quickly. All of the quotations and prices for all of the products that we've gone over will be in the link description. So if you're looking to pick up your kit, you'll have an idea of all the prices for this store over here. As I always say, I do recommend coming into store to get your kit so you can be sure of everything. Don't forget guys, if you want more help, post any comments or questions that you have below and there'll be a link to the video in the video description to the website where you can join the forum page and stay in touch with me or anyone from the website and ask any questions that you may need. And also don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. All of the links are going to be below in the video description. Chris Market Tutorial. Take care till next time guys.